When H.G. Wells sent the hero of the time machine into what Wells called futurity, it was on a grim 30 million year round trip to pretty much the end of Earth time, when the last, poorest excuses for life were flopping around under a darkening sun. Wells wasn't the first writer to imagine time travel, but he advanced the idea that a machine could accomplish it, and he pushed his machine to the limit. To Wells, in 1895, time was a dimension much like forward and back, or up and down, but he gave no clue as to how the machine might move a human being through the fourth dimension into the future. He just wanted to get there. Einstein offered an answer seven years later, in 1905, with his special theory of relativity. Time, by Einstein's equations, was not a fixed property of the universe, but a relative property of things in motion. So began a century of strong, almost gravitational attraction between physics and fiction. The neatest, and certainly the most famous, may be that of Carl Sagan and his novel Contact, but more about that in a minute. It takes a lot of gravity to significantly warp time. A black hole has such enormous gravitational force that it creates a tear in space-time itself. But a black hole is no portal because it will suck a would-be time traveler into the cramped quarters of infinite density forever. A properly engineered wormhole theoretically creates a passage between two black holes that leads to another place in the universe. A bit of galactic scale fiddling with one end of the wormhole turns it into a time machine. The Einstein-Rosen bridge, as the notion was then called, looks like a black hole attached to a mirror image of itself. The problem with wormholes is that the channel created between two black holes is minuscule, smaller than the center of a single atom, and remains open for only a fraction of a second. Even light, the fastest entity in the universe, would not have enough time to pass through. And no matter how sturdy the spacecraft, our traveler would inevitably be ripped apart by the black hole's immense gravitational forces. Because of these and other problems, the Einstein-Rosen bridge was for many years thought of as a geometric curiosity. A theoretical quirk that could never be of use to even a fictional time traveler. Einstein's equations might allow for wormholes, but the universe certainly did not. All that changed in the 1980s, however, when a physicist at the California Institute of Technology devised a better way to use wormholes as time machines. If Einstein and Rosen are the architects of the space-time shortcut, then Kip Thorne of Caltech is its structural engineer. Thorne was the one Carl Sagan turned to when he needed to jump a character through space in his novel Contact. Starting from the rough sketch that Einstein and Rosen left behind, Thorne created an algorithm that describes in strict mathematical terms the physics of a working time machine. Thorne's problem was finding a way to hold open the wormhole's channel, or throat, long enough for an explorer to pass through. Ordinary matter won't do. No matter how strong it is, any scaffolding made of matter cannot brace against the crush of space-time. Thorne needed a substance that could counteract the squeeze of a black hole. Thorne needed anti-gravity. Instead of contracting the space around it, as ordinary matter does, anti-gravity, or negative energy as it is sometimes called, pushes it apart. In theory, anti-gravity would be placed inside a wormhole's throat, opening it wide enough for an astronaut, or possibly even a spaceship, to pass through. The problem is finding it. Einstein first postulated the existence of anti-gravity on cosmic scales in 1915, a conjecture proven correct eight decades later. But Einstein's anti-gravity is wispy and dilute, a spoonful of sugar dissolved in the Pacific Ocean. Opening a wormhole requires a regular torrent of anti-gravity. So how do we create enough anti-gravity? We'll cover this in the next episode. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next video.